In this episode of Hardtail Party, we have a very special treat. I'm here with the Celilo Cycles team taking a look at this incredibly unique handcrafted wood and carbon fiber hardtail. I'm here with Scott and Ozzy from Celilo Cycles. Scott is the mad scientist, engineer. This is your creation. We're going to talk all about it. Welcome, Scott. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Steve. Love, love to be in the studio. It's so, so cool to be in here. Well, and it's so cool for me to have your product in front of me. We first saw them a year ago at the Sedona Mountain Bike Festival, and I was blown away. And we've been in constant contact, and I'm so stoked to get one of these in and build it up and ride it. And I'm here with Ozzy, crash test pilot. I mean, uh, product <laughs> tester. Yeah. yeah. His yeah. job is to find out where the weak spots are, and he's good at that. Yes, That's awesome. <laughs> super fun to ride these things. So I'm, I'm happy to be a uh, uh, happy to be a crash test demo. Here's how I want you to think about this. This is a carbon bike with wood around it, not a wood bike. It's not a wood bike. There's carbon fiber hidden in here that you can't see. And so at first glance, you might think, oh, I'd break that immediately. I've heard people say that. And there's no way I'd ride a wood bike. I'd break that. Yeah. This isn't a wood bike. Think of it as like a canoe that you hollow out of a log and then you line that with carbon fiber. And then you do that twice, and then you glue those together like those pole bikes that are uh, machined out of aluminum and, and bonded together. The pole is a great analogy. That, that Their manufacturing process is very similar to this. Awesome. The CNC manufacturing and uh, machining inside and out. No two bikes are the same. Well, they are not. They can't be because every piece of wood is different. So cool. And this one's got a, a burned finish. Correct. That's so cool. Yeah, the just... A little bit of charring, it, yeah. the, to, it really brings out the character and makes the colors pop. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, so talk us through how you came up with this idea, because nobody else is doing anything like this. It, it, it wasn't completely original to build wood bikes. There are lots of people building wood bikes. Bamboo. But it, and, bamboo, yeah. et cetera. And, and my son sparked the, the, the conversation when he was 12 or something, wanting to learn how to weld so he could build a bike. Um, and I, I thought, well... That's been done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So is there something else we could do that I know how to do? And I had, uh, I was a home builder and a cam cabinet shop owner and whatnot. So I had skills to make wood products. And I just started looking around. It, it, could you make a bike out of wood? And found these companies that were doing it and seemed to me they were incredibly beautiful. Sure, um, no doubt. But they had problems. Like they couldn't build them fast enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so the engineer in me thought, that's an engineering problem. How do we fix those CAD CAM problems, those uh, uh, systems to be able to build it on a schedule and have been on all fronts, trying to figure out how to model it, that it looks this pretty, trying to figure out the car carbon fiber composites applications to make it doable and provide the strength without it being too heavy, uh, and then do all that in a time frame that makes sense. So Scott's being humble. He's an engineer professor at Oregon State. And Little Beebs. Yeah, and, <laughs> and he and his students have thought through so many aspects of this. So what are some of the common misconceptions about this bike when they just see it at face value? First thing is it's gonna be heavy. Yes. That they think it's solid wood and it's gonna weigh 15 pounds, uh, but, it, but it's hollow and it's reasonably light. It's never gonna be as light as a carbon fiber frame but it compares to aluminum, definitely compares to steel. Um, awesome. and, and then the strength. Have enlisted Ozzy and, and other beta testers uh, t that are out there riding them, racing them, going out there to get as many miles as they can to see. And we found problems. Sure. And some of them are, I, I, some I think are related to Ozzy riding in 115 degree heat. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do it. But you know, also, and it's never like, Things that the frame's just not strong enough is things like, well, the bottom bracket's creaky or the way the um, dropout interface works, yeah. the little little details. But uh, because the, you're small production, you can change on the fly and tweak it. That's right. It's, it's easy to it, it want that feedback as quick as possible to in, get find out everything that can be better and 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 fix it. And that's part of the reason we're here. <laughs> well, that's cool. And that's cool for your students, too, to get that real-time feedback and then make engineering decisions that's to right. overcome. So many engineering problems. In oh, this. so cool. Well, I'm, I'm so excited. I think another misconception people are going to have is that this is 
handmade and you're like hand carving these, like whittling these out of a log or it's something. It's hard, okay. even with a CNC machine, but... There's a lot of hand labor in this. Th there is to get it to the final step. But yeah, all of the things that make it a bike um, it, that provide the details of the, um, the, the cross sections of the sizes and the, the fits between the components, like the wheels and the, the cranks at the bottom bracket, that, that's all created by CNC. So it's high precision, very repeatable. So it's a lot like that pulley. That's right. I mean, you machine two halves, bond carbon inside of it for the strength yes. and that lightweight and internal tube and tube cable routing. And then instead of having one giant slab you're making out of this, you're doing this in sections and fitting them together like puzzle pieces. That's correct. This is similar, you know, tube construction that there's a top tube, down tube, C tube, etc., And each piece, there's a left side top tube, a right side top tube. Um, the left side is all assembled, as you're talking about, and hollowed out and reinforced like you would a canoe or just a carbon fiber bike frame. Yeah. Um, and do that to both halves, sandwich them together. Uh, and then another reinforcement that's an uh, expandable sleeve that's in each of the tube sections to bond the halves together, as well as this external stripe to bond the halves together. So it becomes a, a close to monocoque that it's yeah. uh, bonded together and, and it's all continuous strength all the way through. So it's different than pulley in that sense that it's not all bolted together and just glued. It's Yeah, they just glue theirs together, yeah. which is a little bit interesting. Too. On adhesives are unreal these days, but right. you've also got carbon fiber layup holding the two halves Bonding together it, exactly. additionally. On. So this is super cool. So why wood? Wood has two jobs. The wood that it does better than any other bike frame material. One is the damping properties that it, I it like that. sucks up the noise. And the other is it just looks so good. It does. <laughs> you ask me, it's the original carbon fiber, so. Right? Hey, that's so it, true. Honestly, and low it, impact, too. It, right. It, it, and the sustainability factor yeah. is, is a motivating factor, yeah. absolutely. Using some natural fiber content. And so using things that, um, that, that it, especially I prefer to use lumber that's from a source that it, it died naturally. That it, was, it fell in a windstorm or... Um, so somehow that it wasn't, we just went into the woods to pull out the best tree we could find. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. You know, um, in the world of us having five, six, seven bikes, it's easy to forget about the ecological impact of what we're doing, but I like that you're thinking about that. Thank you. And it's beautiful. I mean, it's this, this thing has a story. This, came, this was a tree. It was a living thing once. That's, That's right. So Not cool. very long ago. <laughs> yeah. That is so cool. Ozzy, you've been riding these for a little while. Tell me what's a little bit different and what your reaction is on the trail when someone comes across one of these. I I instantly have to stop because <laughs> they they they're just they're just looking at it. They're like, whoa, and then, you know you see that expression. Um, very common, especially when I take it to like little local races and things like that. And um, I'm happy to stop and, and talk about it. And um, my my initial reaction to un unboxing this bike very, very similar to yours, was what a beautiful piece of art. You know, this is very easily something you can you can mount on a wall and just stare at it. And I actually had to do that for several weeks. I, I have to be honest with you, I didn't even ride it because I was just staring at it, you know, right in my living room. And uh, my wife finally budged me like, hey, look, you got to ride this thing, man. He made a commitment. So, um, no, but it, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very unique piece of, of, of art that's writable. You know, it's a functional art. It's unlike anything that I've written. So um, this is something very special and I'm, I'm, I'm super happy to be, uh, you know, to be a part of the process. Well, I love that it's not just beautiful, but it's meant to be written. It's meant to be written. And it, um, I don't want there to be any disincentive to write it. It, it. I want it to look awesome, but get out there and write it. So this one's a prototype. You built this to my geometry. That's correct. Which We're is kind of experimenting. To me unusual, but, but um, it, you know what you want. <laughs> I do. I know what I like. Scott thinks I'm crazy. Everyone that I talk to that I tell my geo, they're like, "You're crazy." Even binary. When I told them about my maniac, they're like, "That is not gonna work." And then they built it, and they're like, "That's gonna work." But it's got a steep seat angle. Uh, we'll take a whole geo measurements, but this is pretty close to my Maniac. It's not quite as slack, which I, I wanted a great trail bike. I knew this was going to hopefully deaden trail chatter and just be a quiet, smooth ride. 
and I've really been gravitating less toward the shreddy double black diamonds. I've got bikes for that, and I've just really been enjoying amazing single track that's really great for hardtails, and I built this geometry with that in mind. So we've got a short rear end, longish reach, and I think it's like a 66 degree head angle. We'll measure it. Um, nice tall stack, so real comfortable ride position. Oh, man. Reasonably long dropper. Yeah. Oh, this is a short seat tube. It doesn't look short because it's big, but it's a short seat tube. So when you're destroying these and doing your destructive testing, uh, because that's what you have to do. Absolutely. We've that hurts that. me to think of you destroying one of these. But, <laughs> it's hard to do the first time, uh, but it, 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 it's satisfying. <laughs> but I've seen a few videos and they're not breaking at these puzzle piece intersections. Correct. These yeah, are the, the strongest. Some of the moments. first ones did. And okay. so that, that led to the full complete reinforcement inside with, with, with fabric. Um, and so the last one, yeah, we just loaded it up and it, it, it took a lot of force and flexed a lot. Interesting. A, 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 a sort of a, an amazing amount. And when it did finally fail, it wasn't a just shatter catastrophic failure. It was just exactly. lots of little spots mm. that you could see on the stress strain curve. Yeah, it's failed, but it still was holding a lot of force, like enough that you could ride out of the forest. Cool. That. <laughs> well, and that's why we have Ozzy to, to, to put these through a beat down because I can't do that. I'm swapping bikes every week. I can tell you what a frame rides like right out of the box, but I can't tell you if it holds up to 1,000, 2,000 miles. And that's why we got it's guys Aussie like Ozzy. Ozzy. That's awesome. Okay. Let's get this thing built up. I can't oh, wait to see nice. it. Let's Let's do it. it. All right, we got it all built up. This thing came in at 29.3 pounds with a heavy NX cassette, my heavy clampers. I'm impressed, my heavy tie bars. This thing is uh, on par with most aluminum frames. This, this frame weighs about the same as my Banshee Paradox. And I like to think of this less as a wooden bike with some carbon in it, but a carbon bike wrapped in wood. I love the wood. I love that it's got this organic feel to it. Like just touching it, it just, it feels like home. It doesn't feel like some, something from outer space that a robot built. It, it has this, you're proud to own this thing. And you're not proud because it says S-Works on the side or because your favorite cross-country racer won the Olympics on it. You're proud because it's unique and someone put a lot of time and effort and thought into this. I love the innovative construction technique. The the hollowing out blocks of wood, you know, running tubes in it for the internal cable routing. The, the tube and tube was perfect. You just push it in, it pops out right where it should pop out. It's among the best that I've seen. Really, really good. Um, I love the clearance. We've got clearance for a 32 oval. It's tight, but I like that. And uh, the cranks maybe have two or three mil clearance between the chain stays, and it's working. We've got clearance for 29 by two sixes on here. With a 40i rim, that's super wide. That fits a little closer to a 2.8. We've got room for Paul clampers in here. Let's get it on the geometer and measure the actual geometry of this thing. Rear center, 420, beautiful. Actual chain stay, 425. Seat tube length, 405. That is a beautifully short seat tube. It doesn't look short though, it looks real proportional. Got a 60 mil bottom bracket drop on the money. That's right what we spec'd. Reach is 435. Effective seat tube angle, 75.5. Head tube angle, 65.3. We were shooting for 66. Every single bike I've measured comes in about half a degree to a degree slacker than I thought. And now I'm curious if the angle of the stanchions is different than the steer tube angle and I'm I've been assuming they were the same. I need to do some verification on that now. Pretty cool, those geo numbers are right in line to what we spec on paper. And it's so fun to see this thing finally built up. What a work of art that's meant to be ridden. And the next step is to take this out on the trails and ride it and tell you what it feels like. I love the innovative approach. I love the new construction techniques. I love that engineering students are involved in this and they're thinking about this and getting real world feedback and taking it back to the drawing board and that they are flexible enough to make changes. And it's so cool to see a prototype that's this polished already. And I know they're only going to continue to improve as they get all those engineering brains together and all the feedback from other writers to let them know what could be made even better. And that gives me hope to see small companies chasing their passion, trying new things, 
creating beautiful works of art that hopefully ride, if it rides half as good as it looks, my goodness, this thing will be incredible. It's been so fun to meet Ozzy and Scott and get to know the company a little bit better. What do you guys think? Would you ride a wooden bike? There's a party in the mountains and you're invited.